Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing something unique. We're going to take a physical desktop machine and convert it to a virtual box virtual machine right after the intro. Hey, quick reminder folks, remember to hit that thumbs up as it helps others find quality content and allows us to continue to make videos like this for you. Click on subscribe and then hit the bell so you get notified anytime we add new content. Okay, everyone. So there's a couple reasons why you might want to do this. Uh, in this case, we're actually doing this for a customer and the customer wants to get a new desktop, but they don't want to go through trying to transfer and migrate everything over from the old desktop. They want to maintain a copy of the old desktop within the new desktop. So that's what we're going to be doing for them today. And we're going to use some tools to first back up the machine in case something gets messed up so we can recover it and start over. And then we're actually going to convert it to a virtual disk and bring it into VirtualBox. Let's get started. Okay, everyone. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a good backup of this machine. And I want to do that because if something goes wrong with the conversion process, I want to be able to restore it as it is now and try again. So to do that, I'm going to download my favorite software, Macroom Reflect, and I'm going to create an image backup of this machine. If you already know how to do that, or if you want to skip ahead to the actual conversion process, see the chapters below the video and you'll be able to skip forward to the part where we actually do the conversion. So to start out here, I'm gonna type in Macrium Reflect free, and use the free version. We're gonna scroll down and we're gonna select Reflect 8 free. We're gonna say download free. We are getting a personal license and you'll need to enter your email address or not. And I'm just gonna select the downloads folder, store the software. And I'm gonna say to run the installer after downloading. We're going to say yes to the user account control prompt. And I don't really need to create a log, so I'm going to uncheck the log, select my language and region, and say next. Next. You'll need to accept the terms of the license agreement to continue and say next. We're going to use the license key that's provided and we're going to confirm that the software is being installed for personal non-commercial use only we're not going to register at this time and we're going to install a desktop shortcut install And now the installation is completed, so we're going to launch the application. And once in the application, we can see all of the disks, which we can back up. Now this is actually our USB drive, so we're going to deselect that. But this is our primary disk, which is an SSD. And we want to get all partitions on this disk. We're going to leave those all selected. We can see that we have 
185 gigabyte free out of 237. So we're gonna to need to plug in an external drive that has at least enough space to do this backup. So I have my USB drive inserted. I actually have a 128 gigabyte USB drive, which should be plenty to make this backup. And I'm gonna say image this disk. And up here, destination comes up. I'm gonna select my Tesla drive. I'm just gonna store it on the root of the Tesla drive. And the backup file name, I'm just gonna leave that at the default. We can go into advanced options and we have some additional options in here. You don't necessarily have to change any of these. I'm gonna leave it at the medium compression level. You can put a password on the image if you're concerned about security. I do wanna verify the image after I create it. Make sure I have a good readable image. I'm gonna check that off. It will automatically verify the file system before it backs it up. Then I can do some comments here or I can shut down. I'm gonna say okay. I'm gonna say next. We're not gonna create a backup schedule for this backup. So we're just gonna say next. And here we can see all the options that we selected. And we can see that the amount of data selected for backup is 52.74 gigabyte. And we're gonna say finish. We're not going to create a backup definition file. We are gonna run this backup now. And the backup should start momentarily here. And there is a priority bar down here. I'm gonna leave mine set to high priority, but if you are doing other tasks on the machine, you can adjust this. Okay, everyone. So as we can see here, the backup and verification completed successfully. We can say, okay. And now we have a known good backup and we can move forward with the process. Okay, everyone. The next step in this process is to download a tool called disk to VHD. The links to all these applications will be in the description of this video. So this utility is going to convert our physical disk into a VHD, which is Microsoft's virtual machine disk format. In a future step, we're gonna convert this VHD into a VDI for use in VirtualBox. But for this step, we need to first get it into a VHD. We're gonna click this link to download going to extract the contents into a directory. And we're going to run the 64-bit version of the application. We're going to say yes to the user account control prompt. Of course, we have to accept the license terms in order to continue. We're going to say agree. By default, it's going to put this disk in our downloads folder. We're going to leave the box checked that says use VHDX. Once we've made all of our selections, we're going to click on create. This process will take a little bit of time. Once this file is created, we're going to move the file to the machine that's going to host the virtual machine. Okay, everyone so we've created the file successfully we can see our virtual hard disk image here so at this point we're going to move that file to our workstation that'll host the virtual machine okay everyone so here we are on the desktop where i have oracle virtualbox installed and at this point we need to convert 
the VHDX file that we created into a VDI so that we can bring it into VirtualBox. And to do that, we're going to run the Windows PowerShell as administrator. We're going to point it to the program files Oracle VirtualBox directory. Or if you're installed on a different location, the location where you have your VirtualBox installation. Now I've typed out a command that has the paths in there that point to my VHDX file. Your path may be different, but the other parts of the command are going to be the same. So I'm going to copy this and paste this in here. And if I expand this just a little bit, we can see the command. And so basically this is the tool that we're using, phone HD. This is the path to my VHDX file. This is the path where I wanted to output my VDI file. Now, in my case, it happens to be the same location where the VHDX file is stored, but you can specify a different location. If you don't specify the full path where you want the VDI file to go, it's going to put the VDI file in the VirtualBox directory. So be aware of that. The last part of the command, we have the switch for format. And this just tells it that we want a VDI format for our VDI file. And just hit enter. And this is going to take some time to process, depending on how large the VHDX file is. And once that process is complete, we're going to move on to VirtualBox. Okay, everyone. So here we are in VirtualBox. And I'm going to go ahead and show the settings. I've already created this machine and attached my VDI and configured the options the way I want them. The only thing you're going to need to do is come in here and under system, you're going to want to make sure enable EFI is selected. And under storage, you're going to want to make sure your VDI file is attached. The rest of the settings, we can keep those the way we want them, which is fine. And we're going to boot the machine. And as you can see, my machine has booted. Let's go ahead and see if we can log in. And I'm able to log in. Everything looks good. Let's go into full screen mode here. The last thing we're gonna need to do is install the guest editions. So we'll go down here. Go to Devices, insert Guest Editions CD Image. And let's go ahead and install those. This will need to reboot the machine. And here we booted. Go ahead and try to log in. And as we can see, we've successfully converted this physical machine into an Oracle VirtualBox virtual machine. And we can continue to work with this machine almost exactly as it was when it was a physical machine. So it really is a great tool and it's not really that hard to do. Okay, folks, so that's going to wrap this one up. Remember to comment below. Check out these great playlists. 
like, subscribe, hit the bell, and thanks for watching.